Jarrell and Mia, you've come together in this church before your family and friends in this ministry to proclaim your love and your faith in God and in each other. Hi, Jarrell. Take you, Mia. Take you, Mia. To be my beloved wife. To be my beloved wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or worse. For richer or for poor. For richer or for poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. I will love you. I will love you. And honor you. And honor you. And cherish you. And cherish you. Until death do we part. Until death do we part. Jarrell and Mia, have you come here freely without reservation to give yourselves to each other in marriage? Yes. Will you love and honor each other as husband and wife all the days of your life? I will. I will. We accept children loving me from God and raise them according to the life of Christ in his church. I will. I Mia. I Mia. Take you, Jarrell. Take you, Jarrell. To be my beloved husband. To be my beloved husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or for poor. For richer or for poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. I will love you. I will love you. And honor you. And honor you. And cherish you. And cherish you. Until death do us part. Until death do us part. You look so good. Love you. You're so good. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at those details. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Happy way. Mia. Take and wear this ring. Take and wear this ring. As a sign of my love. As a sign of my of my, and my love. fidelity. And my fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Jarrell. Jarrell. Take and wear this ring. Take and wear this ring. As a sign of my love. As a sign of my love. And my fidelity. And my fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Ladies and gentlemen, if we could all please stand. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you Second Lieutenant and Mrs. Labra. Keep that applause going, ladies and gentlemen. So Jarrell and I met about 19 years ago in kindergarten, and specifically in our ESL program. And uh, in case you don't know what ESL is, ESL is English as a second language. All right, it's funny because English is actually my first language, uh, and I'm pretty sure it was Jarrell's first language too. But uh, so.
since we were the only two Asian guys in a school of like 800 kids, I guess they felt the need to kind of throw us in there. Um, what's funny was that Darrell got out in like the first year, and I stayed until the fourth grade. I guess, I guess because I'm stupid or whatever compared to him, but yeah, so. Um, by the way, is the mic low? Is it we're good? Okay, okay. Alright, uh, so Jerome and I were never really the popular kids in school. I mean, we didn't play sports, we didn't get invited to birthdays, uh, but it didn't matter because we had each other. Um, it actually wasn't until the fifth grade, it actually wasn't until the fifth grade whenever we started becoming more social. Our fifth grade classroom was stacked with uh, football players, the cheerleaders, the nerds, and then us. Uh, so we had a whole spectrum of personalities, and I don't know how it happened, but somehow we became the class clowns that year. And everybody seemed to really like us. Not that that really mattered though, but I guess to us it kind of felt good to know that we were some sort of dynamic duo. However, we were a problematic duo. <laughs> there was this one time during lunch in fifth grade where the entire class was being very rowdy, including Jarrell and myself. We were shouting, throwing food, arm wrestling, all around just being obnoxious. And at the end of lunch, we were told that all of us were getting our folder signed. Right? And what that meant was that our parents would see that we were on our worst behavior. It was a very, very bad thing. It's kind of like the equivalency of going to jail, but in elementary school. So as we were lining up to get our folder signed, I see Jarrell starts crying. And he's saying things like, why me? I didn't do anything. Please don't sign it. And so at the end of it all, all of us got our folder signed, except Jarrell. This, this teacher did not want to deal with it. And, from that story, I just kind of understood Jarrell to be someone who stood his ground. Um, inevitably, when we got to high school, we actually went our separate ways for the first time. Uh, he went to one school and I went to the rival. Jarrell and I didn't necessarily part ways, but it's very natural when two friends who don't see each other as often don't talk as much. But that's okay because whenever we would talk or um, hang out through parties or uh, mutual friends, we would pick up right where it left off. It stayed this way in college as well, but as I said, him and I have always known that we're only a phone call away, and uh, we was always got each other's back. And uh, to Tyrone, Kaleki, John, I uh, really appreciate you guys uh, taking care of my boy in college. Oh, yeah. he, uh, he, he told me some of the stories, and I just want to say thank you for real. Like, y'all y'all some real ones. I know, uh, Jarrell, I know you made a great group of lifelong friends here, so that's awesome. I'm so glad I got to meet them, okay? Um, so to wrap things up, I just want to say this. Jarrell, I know I've never got to truly share this with you, but for our entire lives, I've always looked up to you, even though I was always taller than you. <laughs> it's kind of ironic that you chose me to be your best man, because in my eyes, between you and me, you were always the better man. Hey. Uh, for, for as long as I've known you, you always had your whole life organized and planned up. And I know life doesn't always go the way we want it to, but to me it seems like you've proved it otherwise. You've always excelled in school, athletic ability, socially. You've always been proud to represent your faith. You love your family, and whatever you put your mind to, you always follow through. And I know these attributes of you will never change. I'm thankful for the memories of our youth. I'm thankful for you always letting me copy off your homework in algebra. I'm thankful for your unconditional love and friendship how we're able to confide in one another without judgment. Um, it's truly an honor to not only stand here and give a speech at your wedding as your best man, but to also watch you grow and accomplish all your dreams since day one. I've always wanted a brother, but unfortunately my mom and dad disappointed me with two sisters. <laughs> um, just kidding, I love them to death. But uh, uh, looking back at all of this, um, I realized I'd had a brother my whole life, and uh, that guy's sitting right here getting married, or he's married. So. <laughs> Um, Mia, I promise you, you've got a good one. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Sansor, I just want to say, um, your daughter's in great hands, I promise, okay? Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Lyra, thank you for raising Jarrell to the man he is today. Um, and so with that being said, I'd like everyone to raise their glass. Here's a uh, tutorial and Mia, congratulations to you both. I wish you a long life full of happiness, prosperity, adventure, and lots and lots of love. Love you guys, cheers.
Madison. Um, thank you all for joining us tonight. It is such a special night. Me and I have been laying in bed thinking about for a couple years now, so I can't believe it's already here. Thank you for everyone who helped make this possible. I couldn't have imagined it have happened with any, anyone without you. So, uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, me and I started out as roommates. Didn't didn't really know each other very well, um, and we ended up sooner rather than later being closer than being basically sisters. Um, after traveling the world together and for a while spending almost every single day together, I thought I knew just about everything there was to know about Mia. And then one crazy night at Origin and all <laughs> Jero came along. turned into Mia and Jarell and I's late night study sessions. <laughs> and our laundry trips and our shopping trips turned into Mia and Jarell and I's laundry trips and shopping trips. Aww. But honestly, I don't mind being the third wheel doll um, because I thought I knew there was everything there was to know about Mia. Um, but then when Jarell came along, he opened up parts of her that I didn't know existed. Um, Jarell brought out more parts in Mia than anyone could have imagined. Parts of Mia shined even brighter around Jarrell. Her faith was stronger. Her love for the world rubbed off on everyone around her. And it was obvious every time she was around Jarrell, she was the happiest she had ever been. So when I went from spending every day with Mia to spending every day with Mia and Jarrell, <laughs> I could tell you that there any, isn't anyone more perfect for each other than the two of them. Through everything that life has brought them and the miles spent apart, their love has only gotten stronger. So first, Mia became my sister, and then Jarrell became my brother. Oh. That was good. <laughs> so congratulations, and thank you all for coming tonight, and let's celebrate.
Staring at 